turn off your fucking computer right now because you're not allowed to know about these things. They don't want you to know about these things. What up, vigilantes? I'm here with Kareem Mays, and it's really awesome to meet people in crypto that focus on different niches in the crypto space. At the Crypto Vigilantes, as you guys well know, we, we focus on what we personally think is the most you know, important aspect of crypto. We focus on, on the race for sound money. And Kareem here is working on NFTs and surveying that space, also video games, correct? Yeah, I'm not working on video games, but I'll look at NFTs associated with video games and see how it works in their ecosystem. I right do on. different reviews with that, so I've learned a bit about that. Plus, the metaverse thing's coming into that, so it's interesting to see. Um, granted, there are good and bad parts of the metaverse integration, I think, but yeah. So, crypto in itself is a multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary field. And all these digital assets are different tools to be used in the open market and entrepreneurs will keep creating new ways to use these technologies and please tell us a little bit about what you do as you survey the whole space yeah well i actually started learning about crypto really when jeff berwick started talking about it from the dollar vigilante and then seeing like the mass printing of dollars i bought a little bit and then you know sold a little bit when it went up and down um, then I looked at Ethereum and I started seeing the rise of like altcoins and I got interested in that. And for a while I was on Fiverr doing a lot of freelance work and I started to review ICOs, which are initial coin offerings based on Ethereum smart contracts for different projects. And that went okay. And uh, based on my video experience, I started to review NFTs, which are non-fungible nice. tokens. Nice. Like Bitcoin's fungible. The idea of NFTs and people can say they like it or not. Wait, it, at, at the Crypto Vigilante, we say Bitcoin's not fungible. What, carry on. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Bitcoin's not fungible. Fair enough. So I started seeing that people could get their artwork and it's just like collecting. Like you probably collect baseball cards or Pokemon cards, X, magic, whatever it is. And the idea of NFTs is you mint it on a blockchain and you get ownership of, you know, specific variations of a character or a picture or a drawing. And it can even go further where you can actually have that character in a video game where you can have that and then start to hold it in your MetaMask wallet and stake it and earn tokens and native to it. And I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. So I bought, you know, you know, I got my MetaMask out and I went through and I like bought one. I was like, OK, this is cool. Started reviewing them and then I made a channel about it. It doesn't have a ton of subscribers, but it's Rockstar NFT. Um, in the description below, follow him. Yeah, so you can find Rockstar NFT, all one word, um, right on my phone. Now, not tons of stuff here, but there's a few things of like the state of NFT, the state of the market. Um, also, I am working with Crypto Dex World and talking about not just NFTs, but like different tokens like Shiba Inu, will it go up or down? Um, things like Terra Luna, um, Chi Hua Hua and different tokens like that. So for me, the NFT space and the altcoin space are going to help a lot of people because some people are like, I missed the boat on Bitcoin, which I don't think you did. It's still 20 grand now. It can go up to 200,000 or a million. But, Millions, dude. But. We're very early people. We're, I, I think we're, we're in the early days, honestly. Yeah. Honestly, I think we're in the early days, like completely in the early days. But anyways, carry on. Yeah, we're in the early days, so even Bitcoin jump in. But if you're like, I, I don't want to buy pieces of Bitcoin or buy one for 20 grand, there's altcoins that I think are good. Crosschain, ADA, uh, Cardano specifically, I would say. Um, Ethereum, Ethereum 2.0 will be powerful. And people always said, like, they want to earn income passively. That's a huge thing online. Earn passive, earn passive. Staking gives you that ability because you can't earn interest because the Fed has destroyed the dollar. But now you can take coins. I specifically do this with Algorand and I stake it. So I give a piece of that percentage and it makes money. And if you have enough tokens, you can just stake them for a while. It's like keeping it in a bank and then you just earn interest on that. So I'm happy with the prospect of that. So I think there's some good altcoins out there like Shiba, Doge even, and um, I'm happy to see what they do, cross, uh, cross link. So. Or cross chain, sorry. So yeah. Have you have you heard of Dero? D E R O. I have not. Smart contract protocol, like Ethereum, but it's private by default. 
it's pretty new. That I have not, but I'd be interested to learn more about that. Yeah. Um, especially because I was looking at Cardano to be the one to pave the way for smart contracts without the high gas fees. And I'm looking for Ethereum too to do that, but Darrow also would be good. Yeah, so like Cardano and Ethereum, like Bitcoin, are open and transparent ledgers. Yes. And to me, it was always di very difficult to buy into the narrative of a DAO or, an I or, or of um, this anything that is uh, DeFi, because if you're not really censorship resistant, you really can't have those attributes, in my opinion. In order to be censorship resistant, you need to be private by default. So yes. that's why I always was like, well, what the heck is going on here? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and by a DAO, you mean a decentralized autonomous organization. Correct. In order to Correct. be decentralized and autonomous, you, have you need to, to have be security. censorship. You have to have yeah. privacy. Yeah. yeah. To my knowledge, um, Monero is the only one that's really hard to crack. The IRS offered like 600000 to try and crack it, which one, Joe Biden, uh, or Beijing Biden, deep state Don will print that away, so it's not worth it. Um, two, uh, even with that, like, even with Bitcoin, you could switch it to wallet, to wallet, to wallet, to cold wallet and make it hard to crack. Although I think Monero is really secure. Um, some of these projects, I do question if they're fully DeFi, decentralized finance. Right. But I think they're getting closer. Um, it depends how the DAO works. See, the thing I like about DAOs is it's actually what people would call is legitimate democracy. It's what I mm. call actually legitimate democracy. Like most democracy in a political sense is getting a mob rule and then enforcing your will on the people by giving a lot of people stolen money. The nice thing about DAOs is if you actually voluntarily buy, say, an NFT or you buy these tokens, then you can say, hey, I want to be part of this process in this ecosystem. It's like a holding equity in a company, per yes, se. Yeah, it's holding a share. But you, if I hold shares in Tesla, I can't call up Elon and be like, yo, um, make uh, self-driving cars cheaper or make right. self-driving like, you know, a thousand bucks instead of seven. But if I hold stake in these tokens, then I can be like, I'm part of the governance process. I want to vote on this thing. I actually want to vote. So it actually puts some power in your hands to hold this. That's the exciting thing. You can stake it and you can hold it as actual equity that has fundamental decision making in the ecosystem rather than just saying, I have a share and the CEO of Pepsi or Tesla or this or Apple is going to do whatever they want. Right on. So. What about everything that you survey within crypto caused your attention the most? Um, right now, currently, uh, it, it definitely is NFTs. Bitcoin caught my interest the most when I saw the massive money printing and, and all these banks too big to fail. Um, smart contracts then caught my attention again because I said, wow, you actually have almost eliminated, whether you like them or not, lawyers. Because if I just say... Instead of writing a contract saying, if you do this, I'll give you this. Now you have an actual automated way of, you know, creating a task and having someone fulfill that and then getting paid. So that caught my eye as well. And then altcoins are fun. I think the Shiba community is really, really cool. That caught my eye and um, just a few others. Always looking on like coin market cap and uh, coin gecko to see what's going on. But sometimes I do want to be careful to avoid the noise because so, there's always signals out there. This will hit this, this will hit this, this will hit this. And you do want to be like, okay, is this realistic or not? Like people told me like uh, Cardano will go up to $100, maybe eventually. But I don't think like next uh, month it will. So stuff like that. That's where I come out. Were you around for the Bitcoin Civil War? Um, like Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Is yeah. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. In the early days, I was following, and I still think he's a, one of the few geniuses, Roger Veer, the Bitcoin. 100%. Shout out to Roger Veer, and it is because of Roger Veer that the crypto space is not completely owned by lizards. 100%. <laughs> For real. He owns a big stake in what? Kraken, um, BitPay, a lot of the yeah. big uh, shit. Uh, I think he even owns a little bit on of Coinbase, like the the Silicon Valley cartel. Yeah, the Winkle and big boss tech. And they came into Bitcoin and crypto, and what you know, I, I'm a big blocker for. So for me, they came in with the intention to destroy Bitcoin because what they wanted was everything. Bitcoin's intention in its original form, from my perspective, was to have the ability to do everything we see in the altcoin market to be experimented on the Bitcoin blockchain itself. And they did not want that to happen because it would have destroyed their monopoly on tech. 
You know, it would have replaced, miners could have replaced Amazon for server farms and they did not want Bitcoin miners to reach enterprise level. So Roger Ver, right, wrong or indifferent, we all have a lot to thank for, for everything that he did in the early days for Bitcoin. In my opinion, he's probably the second most important person in crypto history after uh, Satoshi. Yeah, which I guess the fundamental question is who do you think it is or do you think it's a person or an organization, which I tend to an organization because writing that white paper to me took several people and ideas. I think it was a group of people, it was okay. a team, and I think there was a master architect because the more I discover crypto, the more I realize that it is multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. The more I get to know Bitcoin, I, the more I understand Bitcoin, I'm a big blocker, I see it still as the most magnificent creation in all of crypto because it's much more than just the coin aspect of Bitcoin, which is what BTC and Bitcoin Cash wanted. I see Bitcoin also having computational power that the lizards did not want us to embrace. It is computational power that gives us a Turing complete machine computer that allows us to do smart contracts on the Bitcoin protocol in its original form, that allows us to do have nano micro transactions on the blockchain which was is bitcoin's killer app which we don't have in btc anymore right allows us to to, to enjoy um simplified payment verification for for applications and financial transactions all within one small world network that is one blockchain Whereas Cardano, for example, since you mentioned it, they use two blockchains, Correct. the computational layer and the settlement layer, yes. which was now, I, I, dude, Bitcoin in its original form gave you both in one. And that was the genius. Yes. Yeah. As a proof of work, I think the idea is proof of work was the fundamental basis. Like the way I look at it, Bitcoin so innovative because it's like when the Internet first came out, nobody knew what it was. And it's like, what's the Internet? And I remember dial up and stuff like that. And I'm like, OK, but I have proof of concept of this technology working. And Bitcoin has that power of proof of work. Then you get proof of stake and then you get uh, smart contracts coming in. I'm like, wow, this is really, really exciting to see. Well, Daryl's proof of work and it does smart contracts. OK, interesting. Yeah. And Bitcoin, big extreme, big blocker Bitcoin is doing smart contracts on the original Bitcoin protocol, BSV. That's what I'm talking about. No. So proof of work you can do smart contracts actually bitcoin script was the programming language that satoshi gave us that no one's using but bsv so what's up why yeah. did they keep this information from us i'm a big proponent of looking where people tell you not to look that's how you have to live life exactly um, a lot of and i think satoshi came up with a dream to get decentralized money so the elites can control everything the group of people that did it and then people, the lizards, as you call them, which I do believe some of them shapeshift based on their Anunnaki thing. The Rothschilds, the Morgans. All I don't know about that. Brian, I just like know. calling them lizards. But they, I mean, they really are. <laughs> They're really sneaky. Like people like Brian Armstrong, who sign up with the World Economic Forum. I'm like, dude, you have a you have a pretty cool exchange Coinbase. Why are you signing up with scumbags at the WEF? I don't. I never thought Coinbase or any crypto exchange yeah. that's KYC AML was ever cool. In my personal yeah. opinion. Yeah. Now I will say this. I do like some things Binance does. Um, I, I have some I have some sympathies with the CEO of Binance, and, and I think. Okay, but the thing is, is that for two reasons, is that I hold this opinion. Okay. Number one, if you really want the coin aspect of Bitcoin in its fullness, you need a Monero, you need a pirate chain. For that to truly be peer to peer, you need decentralized private by default exchanges, which are being created like Havano Desk, Bisc Network. Agora Desk and Darrow will be creating a shit ton of different platforms to exchange those digital assets. From a Bitcoin perspective, and I'm talking about as a big blocker Bitcoin perspective, we never needed a shitcoin altcoin market. Like I said earlier, we could have experimented with everything that we see in the altcoin market on the Bitcoin blockchain itself. That it, and so that mindset, now right away, imagine everything that we saw in the altcoin market, minus privacy coins, all being built and experimented on the Bitcoin blockchain itself. Imagine the price of Bitcoin right now. 
Yeah. Right. So that was a dream of the big blocker like myself. From day one, when I discovered Bitcoin, I now I did not just fall in love with Bitcoin as money, as the coin aspect of Bitcoin. I fell in love with the bit aspect of Bitcoin. It's computational power, and and that's yeah. something that bothered me, man. Well, because because I was like, why are you creating other blockchains where we can do it here? Yeah, I mean, there's tons of there's like yeah. cross chain, hollow chain, this, and fine. If people want to put innovation out there, I'm all for it. Um, one thing I fell in love with Bitcoin is that a finite amount of 23 million, so now you can't mass print it. And all the horrors, in my opinion, of the 20th century and even going back to other centuries are from mass printing of money. It starts war, big pharma, the prison industrial complex, killing millions of people. You couldn't really have this Middle East excursions problem if you, you know, just didn't have the funds for it. We can't print enough Bitcoin to start a war. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And that's one thing like I see when Jamie Redmond posts, he posted after the Ukraine thing. It was a Bitcoin thing and I posted it, make war too expensive. Like I'm not necessarily a utopian in the fact that I think any, everybody will follow the NAP, but I right. am realistic in the fact that Bitcoin and other coins could make war too expensive and it can also raise up third world countries right like on venezuela who's been destroyed by socialism people can say okay i'm going to contract in decentralized currency and i see this i see people from nigeria they're like oh my god what token do you have even if it's not bitcoin i'll put it in my metamask wallet i want to try it and i'm like here i'll send you some in metamask or hey i want to try this token so crypto will save the third world and probably allow it to be in the same position is the developing world or the developed world over time because people have a stable thing to contract with and specifically bitcoin is the father of all of them so right on that's that's the and, power in all this and everything we're talking about is forbidden crypto bitcoin knowledge turn off your fucking computer right now because you're not allowed to know about these things they don't want you to know about these things look when i fell in love about with bitcoin my idea was way more than like like supplanting banks with sound money yeah. i wanted i so i saw bitcoin's computational power and i'm like holy smokes this is what we need to compete with big tech where bitcoin miners can scale to enterprise level yeah. and we can like rival amazon server farms where you as an entrepreneur can use the bitcoin miners as the back end of your business you don't need silicon valley money anymore it's going to be cheaper and easier to use because well, the there's miners. some projects like that. Yeah. Uh, sorry to cut you off. No, go for it, yeah. But, like, there, there was a platform I was posting on. I probably have my key saved somewhere. I hope I do, like, Steam it. And I'm like, okay, I can earn Steam dollars if people upvote. Now there's things like uh, Substack necessarily is just money, but there's mines. Mines you can, if you're posting good enough. And the big one that I like that Jeremy Kaufman, uh, you know, is Odyssey. So I hope Odyssey can rise up and be a competitor Odyssey's to badass. Yeah. I mean, to you me, it it's my favorite platform right now. YouTube I do. A few years. I do. Now, the, the, the thing is, is that in order to compete with big tech, you have to be able not just, I mean, privacy is a cool game. So I think that there, like Odyssey will always be that Monero to YouTube, right? But I think that to compete with big tech, you have to be able to embrace big data in a completely and new and different way so what i see bitcoin in its original form promising the world which is what i think the lizards hate the most is is that you're able to grab big data and protect it with the same bitcoin proof of work that protects the transactions and you own your information yes right yes. so that's that's i think the big game changer and that's only possible when you allow bitcoin miners to scale and to be completely autonomous but when you have centralized technocrats telling bitcoin miners how they're supposed to scale and up to what point they're supposed to scale at that point we're fucked and that's what happened during the bitcoin civil war that miners were literally little bitches the technocrats told that told them what they're supposed to do and miners at the time they didn't really fucking have the financial incentive to actually say, no, fuck you, we're going to do as we want. But rather, they just followed a political choice. And, 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 and you know what? I see, personally, bluntly speaking, BTC not being able to sustain its miners into the far future unless they're able to be completely dependent on the price of fiat, meaning that BTC has to forever be the bitch of 
big tech, Wall Street, and Silicon Valley in order for it to stay with that high fiat evaluation so that it can feed its miners because in BTC miners will forever be subject to the subsidy we call it a subsidy big blockers we call it a subsidy it's like a government subsidy that Satoshi gave us as the block reward but in reality our dream as miners has always been to move on to the golden age of mining where we're making more money out of the transaction fees than we do from that subsidy so in order to really have that in Bitcoin in a true Bitcoin economy we have to scale on chain something that is not possible in BTC BTC and something that I fight for every fucking day, bro, because we need this alternative. No one else is doing this. No one else is fucking posing themselves as a rival to big tech. And that's where I'm at. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, so, I understand. I, well, I do see some rivals like Rumble, um, whatever you think. Or I'm, I'm skeptical of Rumble. Um, there's like, you know, places, there's different things like Gab. If you want to consider Gab kind of a like alternative, yeah, where... but I mean, to me, I see him still falling into that same internet. And to me, Bitcoin was not just money. Bitcoin was a new internet. Yes. As a big blocker, this is why we had a civil war, because Bitcoin was not just a money. Bitcoin was a new internet. At the very least, it's a new way to transfer data, where every data packet on this new internet is a tiny nano transaction that goes through this new internet, through this new network that is Bitcoin, where data and money are one and the same. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And, and so that was something that we almost lost in crypto. And that's and, and I think and that we're still fighting for. A lot of people see the crypto vigilante. You know, I work with Jeff Berwick, anarcho capitalist, and a lot of people are mind fucked, get mind fucked that I have this perspective. It's anathema. It is not right for me to have this perspective. And I say, fuck you, I have this perspective because I'm an anarchist and I'm a free thinker. All the other analysts at the crypto vigilante don't agree with me, but look, I see something here that is not being allowed to flourish. It is the most, like what Satoshi gave us in its original form is that one thing that the crypto world has been trained to hate the most. And there's this cap anti-capitalist mindset to think that minor autonomy is all oh, centralization. Bro, that's an anti-capitalist yeah. mindset. It's the myth of the natural monopoly. Yeah, the it's elite, all it is. Um, well, what the elite do is they take all good things in its form. And this isn't even crypto. You can pick anything, religion uh, or Jesus's teachings. You can pick like, you know, uh, ideas that were good and they take it and invert it. Right. All Bitcoin supposed right. to be an anarcho-capitalist right. concept. And then these communists or technocrats are really what they are. are like, oh, we can seize control this by. Fuck to, you, to motherfuckers. Now, um. I've had, like, you know, I saw Juan Galt's thing, if you know Juan Galt as of well. Of course I know Juan um, Galt, And he yes. said, like, you know, Ethereum is also uh, the uh, preferred coin of the uh, the elite as well. So I have, to, I have some thoughts Bro, on Bitcoin the, the, I th My opinion is that crypto in general, save privacy coins, at this point, um, it, 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 that everything is, is, is their bitch right now. Uh, why? Because there's two meritocracies in crypto that need to be emphasized. One is the FOSS ethos, the free and open source software ethos, which is what Monero as is the number one coin in the world for. They fucking focus on the purity, the sanctity of peer review source code. That is fucking amazing. There is a meritocracy there. The Monero developer and contributor is more quick to tell you what could possibly go wrong with Monero than to tell you and to like floss their coin. They don't care about that. They care about telling you, bro, these are possible vulnerabilities that we see far out into the future. And this is how we are planning on, 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 on like attacking that, on fixing that in the future. That's some real shit, bro. Yeah. Well, right? Monero, That's the real, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, Monero is the only one that I know of, and I can be wrong because I haven't studied it, but Monero is the only one that is really untrackable because of how the data is encrypted. And I don't think they're ever going to break that, and that's why it's so powerful. To me, the, the, the biggest thing about crypto is get the elites out of it. When the elites can't control something, that I'm like, okay, I like that thing. When they can't control alternative media, I get excited. When they can't control alternative money or alternative speech, I'm like, ha, I get excited because... 
at the end of the day, to me, the, the world is in such a state that it is, and Bitcoin was even created because the elites took currencies and destroyed them and hyperinflated them and used them to kill uh, millions of innocent people. Now we have something in Monero and hopefully something in maybe some other coins that they'll not be able to track. The minute they can't track money, they don't know what you're doing. Their whole great reset and all this, you know, surveillance state starts to fall apart because it's like, fine, we're not going to use USD anymore. I'm going to use Monero or I'm going to even exchange Monero. On, you know, that's why I use exchanges just to exchange it for poop, poop, poop. And I am a fan of DEXs. Um, I don't know if you are, but I do like the idea of like pancake swap. Oh, for sure. Yes. Um, I, I like them when they're private. Yeah. yeah. Pancake swap is awesome. So shout out to pancake swap. Yo, pie swap on Daryl, baby. It's coming. Is that another DEX? It's on Daryl, dude. Private yeah. by default, man. Yeah. And it's coming. Pancake swap, Uniswap, Dar uh, pie swap. That is what will actually uh, save us because when you have a good DEX and that DEX can host multiple things and that even goes back to NFTs, then they're not going to be able to control it. You'll be able to exchange, put it in a cold wallet if you want, which I'm really getting sick of this one thing everybody says who's a normie who's like, what if the power goes out? What if the power goes out? One, it can be on a cloud, which is just someone else's computer, but it can be on an exchange. If it's not if it's in a cold wallet, if the power goes out, nothing will happen. And people ask, well, what if there's an EMP? Well, you can protect from even EMP technology. Yeah, they're going to have to so. EMP the whole damn world to take yeah. crypto out. Yeah. It's so, not going to happen. So, yeah, it's not, you know, that's that's not realistic. So that's just one thing I wanted to throw that everybody always says. Get yourself some awful. Faraday bags. Quit playing around. <laughs> right? Yes. Get yourself EMP some proof. cold wallet storage. Um, hang out on some cool dexes, check out some NFTs, and don't let the N don't let the elite control um, any more uh, cryptocurrencies than they already do. Dude, so there's another meritocracy that I think is highly misunderstood. I already talked about the Fossitos. Yes. And this is where we get very contentious. It's the Nakamoto consensus that Satoshi gave us. Which is not the FOSS ethos itself. It's having a fixed and stable Bitcoin protocol that with through proof of work, we get a meritocracy of value. A capitalist meritocracy of not just transactions by miners doing their work to secure the network, but imagine now doing that with all content. So that's something else that like, is part of the big block extreme mindset that I come from in Bitcoin, in the Bitcoin world history that I come from. Whereas I see BTC and Bitcoin Cash seeing the Nakamoto consensus from a different perspective. They see what I just said and say, yeah, I agree with you. But number one, A, we got to control miners because they're scared of miner autonomy. And B, since they in their protocols control the protocol itself, they have a group of technocrats tinkering with the protocol because it's not fixed and stable, they jump in and they mix in the FOSS ethos into the Nakamoto consensus. To me, that's something else. I personally see Bitcoin Cash and BTC as a hybrid between two hybrid experiments between the Nakamoto consensus and the FOSS ethos. The pure FOSS ethos it would be the, the fucking Monero all the way. Monero is the premier cryptocurrency as cryptocurrency in the world. It is the most fucking badass like network when it comes to the FOSS ethos on the planet. But when we talk about the Nakamoto consensus itself... We need to talk about extreme capitalism. Yes. And if we're gonna, and, when, and take power out of the equation. No technocrat should mess with the damn protocol. Let it be fixed and stable. But yes. They, yeah, that was a Bitcoin civil war right there, bro, in a nutshell. It was technocrats wanted to fuck, the fuck around with the, the network, with the protocol, with the rules of the game, to fix it according to their whim. And they wanted to limit minor autonomy. Yeah. So, yo, what the fuck? Who assigned you as a Supreme Byzantine General? Mr. Cordev, not me? <laughs> fuck you. Don't touch my Bitcoin. <laughs> I, love, I love it. Yeah. yeah. And just to note on that, like a lot of people have a misconstrued understanding of capitalism. Not to go off like the crypto thing when this COVID stuff happened. They said, oh, 
Kareem, it's a private company. They can, you know, do whatever they want with like the jab. And I said, like, look, listen, if they're a fully private company, they don't receive any funding or any influence or anything from the state. It's completely independent of the state. That is the only way to do capitalism. The only way to really do capitalism is anarcho capitalism. 100%. And, and then going to crypto, the only way to really, you know, say is to make it completely decentralized and completely untraceable so that it has the, to be private uh, by default. Was, yeah. So look, man, I will throw you a challenge here, though. All right, let's do it. And this is the this is it. That we live in a world with government. It's slowly collapsing. 100%, I agree. Yeah. I see Bitcoin as the means by which we're going to supplant government with a meritocracy of value, proof of work itself. It will be a proof of work in everything. It will no politics will cease to exist, governments will cease to exist, and it will be miners figuring out what's best for everyone in the world, what's best for these networks of cooperation by securing them. Because if they don't do what's best, guess what happens? They don't. They're not as yeah, profitable. Yeah, yeah. It's while well, capitalism's predicated, like even going back to Ayn Rand. You have to, even if you are the most selfish person on the earth, which we're all self-interested, people say they're not, are lying. I think Satoshi was a Randian. So, yeah, I think he, he was a, a Randian or he was just a Rothbardian. I wouldn't be surprised if he was reading Murray Rothbard and then decided to Definitely, code this. yes. Uh, or a combination of both even. Right. And I will say, yeah, we live in a world of governments, but they're slowly losing power here, Sri Lanka, other places. And it'll be interesting to see if it is miners or it's people who are able to set up a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. And I, I see a world of multiple DAOs where it's like, I, you know, kind of like I own these stocks, but I can, you know, make some decisions about this and this. Uh, here's how I want to handle, you know, what's going on in this ecosystem. And they can be on different blockchains as well. I think it's just you got to be careful on which blockchain you're on because Solana just had a big wallet draining. Um, if you're into Solana, that, that, that's one thing right. to take a look at. So, yeah, I think the idea is having a crypto that's completely decentralized. You can't trace it. And then based on that, you distribute it to people. You have a certain amount. And if you want to be deflationary and burn some, you can. Then the people who hold these tokens are able to interact in that ecosystem. Just like, hey, when you were a kid or whatever, they gave you tickets for winning and you could turn that in for like a stuffed animal. Same thing here, except that will be everything in this ecosystem. You can get benefits, merch, this, who knows, maybe even at some extent food, real estate, that everything will get into that. And I see a world of uh, multiple DAOs instead of governments, decentralized autonomous Dude, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love so, it. Yeah. Let's push for that. So everything that I said about Bitcoin, disclaimer, disclaimer, my personal opinion. Yes. At the Crypto Vigilante, this is not a safe space. It's a brave space. And we welcome all opinions, and they're going to yeah. be challenged. The vast majority of the analysts at the Crypto Vigilante don't agree with me on Bitcoin history or the Bitcoin Civil War. Yeah, and a lot of people don't agree with, cool me with me on stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's cool with me. A lot of people have said, like, NFTs were goofy, one sold for a million. They're still like, eh. A million Ethereum, whatever, it's still a picture. People said, I see it. People said this was, you know, when Bitcoin first came out, why do you get, why are you interested? Because I see it as a way to circumvent the elite. I see Monero even more so. Um, and I'm, I'll just say everything I say in my videos. I, uh, with this, this is all my opinion. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please do your own research, due diligence, and do not invest in anything you're not willing to lose. I'm Kareem from Rockstar NFT, and uh, I do work with Crypto Dex World. And thank you very much for having this discussion. Right on, right on, right on. Look, NFTs. I want to ask you before you leave one last thing. I yes. foresee NFTs meaning so many things than just mere pictures yeah. or music. I see it. I see a, a world where you're going to be selling your time as an nft for your for your for your labor i see i see markets for jobs based on nfts yes so we're at the beginning of this yeah correct we're at the beginning of this and i do see actually nfts as being tangible assets and no it's not just pictures if people really thought like oh man jeff berwick's cool he does the crypto vigilante you know thing of the dollar vigilante he does a signature you know, back in the day, it'd be like super expensive, like, oh, I got a celebrity signature. Well, I just have that framed up there. 
Well, imagine if you took a picture and then distributed it to all your friends. You're like, this is the real signature, but I'm going to give you a stamp of approval. And that is essentially, to me, minting, creating a new coin on the blockchain. So the nice thing is now you can take NFTs and whatever it is. It could be a picture, which is most what it is. It could be a picture or a, a you know variation of that that you use a character in a game and then you earn stake coins. It could be a signature. It could be a you know some type of tangible you know item you know used in some places. Now be careful of the metaverse because people who are around Klaus Schwab have talked about manipulating that and getting people stuck in in virtual words. But NFTs themselves, <laughs> NFTs themselves, I think have great potential to be, yes, it could be a time asset, it could be a picture asset, it could be something used in games. You can get play to earn. Remember when you're a kid and you're like, I want to get played to, you know, do video games. And, and people say, why are you playing so many video games? I wish I was growing up in the NFT space. I could play video games for 20 hours a day and get the native token of that ecosystem. Boom. Nice. Uh, for that. So I think there's a lot of potential to that. I'm going to keep reviewing them video-wise on, on Fiverr and different places and doing informative videos on Rockstar NFT, even though I just started that. Doing NFT news, hopefully, in the future. Um, I can update you on that and uh, keep doing crypto videos and, and letting people know. I'm not like... I don't have tons and tons of subs, but, you know, eventually I get my voice out there. And well, we're definitely like plugging you. Where can people follow you? All right. So you can follow me at Facebook at Kareem M. Mays. I also have Rockstar NFT, one word, where I just talk about NFT stuff. I'm doing stuff with Crypto Dex World, all one word, where I talk about different, like, things going on in the crypto space with other people. That's not specifically my channel, but I'm working some others with that project. And uh, I also have a Steam it as well. You can find me on Twitter at Kareem uh, for Liberty as well. Um, I'm an anarcho capitalist because of Adam Kokesh. And uh, I found out about Bitcoin mainly from Roger Beer. So a lot of really good people in this space, all starting with Ron Paul. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Papa me. Paul, the grandpa of Bitcoin. Yes. And the most important investment is your education, guys. 100%. If you have to ask anyone what to invest in, you're just putting yourself in the position of maybe being manipulated by someone. Invest in your education, and it's free. Just open up your computer, fire it up, and start watching videos. Come to the point where you make your own decisions. Yes. The whole idea of decentralization is you say, as an individual, I can make my own choices, and some of those might be wrong, but it's still better than a central institution planning it because... Even if central planners knew exactly what was right for you, they would have no right to do it for you. So it's up to you as an individual to get it right. And once we can say that decentralized social cooperation is better than central planning and that anarchy is not a scary word, it just means no rulers, and in practice means um, a system of rules um, outside of a, a central institution, I think things will change. So thank you. Right on, brother. Thank you for being with us, Kareem. What up, vigilantes? I am on my way to go speak to the business association of this whole area of Acapulco called Bonefield, where we have Anarchapulco. We're going to set them up with crypto. So all these people, all these businesses are going to become merchants, crypto merchants. So very excited about that. I'm actually walking there right now. So at the end of Anarchapulco, I felt compelled to give a workshop. And it was really two workshops in one. One, it was on the, on the topic of AI and how to respond to it as the crypto community. And I, we gifted you guys the tools, so open source, so you can learn more about how to respond to AI using proof of work. And the second topic of the conversation is how, we, how can we onboard up hundreds of millions of users overnight into the crypto space? And that has already been solved. So go to this description. This information needs to get out. I, in my opinion, is probably the most, the two most pressing issues of our time that are really, you know, come down to just one issue. We need to reach hyper cryptodization before AI takes over. And we have the tools. So we really want you guys to click in the description and watch this workshop. I, I did it at the end of Anarchopulco. After everything was done, I just felt compelled. I felt called to do it. In my opinion, it's the most badass workshop that I've ever given because it has to do with 
what is, in my opinion, the two biggest issues in our time. AI and fixing the, the crypto onboarding problem. Both wrapped in one. You guys got to watch it. Uh, I can't stress in, enough how important this, this workshop is. We're giving it away for free. So just sign up below, watch the workshop. This actually was a three and a half hour workshop and we broke it down to, there goes a puppy. And we, it, we, it, broke, it broke down to uh, like, an, after editing, it was like an hour and 30 minutes. So we trimmed the fat for you and I hope you enjoy it. Peace, love, anarchy, bye.